Hi, I'm Dr. Sridhar. Welcome uh, to my channel. I hope you have subscribed. Do share and uh, like these videos as well. Uh, the YouTube algorithm sh uh, spreads the message better if a video shows engagement from your likes. So you don't need to really say, I like this video. If you learn something from it, do click the like button. Thank you. Uh, this question today is about blood gas. So arrange the source of the blood gas sample in order of preference. This is a fairly easy question. Uh, obviously, uh, this is just to discuss which sampling method is preferable in what situation and whether you can use, uh, for example, a venous sample. So the choices are A, venous, B, arterial, and C, capillary. Uh, I'll pause for a few seconds for you to think. Okay, so as I said, the answer is obvious. The first choice is going to be arterial sample, which is the uh, gold standard. Your PaO2, your pH, your carbon dioxide, everything is going to be more uh, accurate. Uh, what we are looking for is arterial. And when you use calculations like oxygenation index, for example, it's a PaO2 that is needed from an arterial sample. Again, the arterial sample, uh, pre-ductal or post-ductal makes a difference, but if you're using an umbilical arterial line in a newborn, it's post-ductal invariably. It shouldn't impact significantly, but remember that it's a post-ductal sample. So if you're using pre-ductal saturation as a comparison, it may be different in a baby with PPHN, for example. Uh, the capillary sample, which is arterialized, which means you're warming the heel before you take the sample, is the second uh, best choice. Arterialization of the capillary means you are warming the heel. Uh, you can use a heel warmer or you can use warm gauze without the risk of burning. So keep it for an appropriate duration at an appropriate temperature. And remember to relax between the squeezes so that the blood fills because if you are tightly squeezing, the congestion happens and the blood is going to be uh, not ac accurate. Again, air admixture during the sampling is important. Venous sample is the least preferred because the pH becomes significantly more acidotic and the carbon dioxide is significantly higher. PaO2 is not reliable in the venous or capillary sample. It's only the arterial sample that you rely on the PaO2. So if you're using capillary gas, rely on the saturation more. Uh, if you have a transcutaneous oxygen monitor, you can use that in the sickest babies as well. So venous gas is only considered in situations where you are putting a cannula and you're going to take a baseline gas, for example. This is again going to minimizing interventions where you accept something which is suboptimal in certain situations like being beneficial in terms of reducing. It will give you an idea of what's happening. If it's a normal venous gas, obviously you're not worried. If the CO2 is high on it, you would repeat a capillary gas quite soon. So uh, it's very important to understand the impact of where the sample is coming from. Another important point about blood gas in babies on therapeutic hypothermia is to reset the machine setting to the temperature of the uh, sample. So like 33 to 34 degrees or whatever you are keeping because the temperature affects the uh, interpretation of the gas, um, how the blood, blood gas machine runs it. The standard is fixed at 37 degrees, so you have to uh, change it in the baby's war on cooling. I hope uh, this point helps. I request you to like and share again. Thank you.